This is Michigan's retirement coach, Mike Douglas. That's Mike Douglas. I'm Heather Branch. We are here to talk and learn more about how to better prepare for our financial future. When it comes to retirement planning, there is a whole lot of stuff you got to manage. And Mike and his team are here to help you figure it all out. Lifeplanwealth.com. That's where you can begin your conversation with Mike and his team. We also have links posted in the show notes. You can just click there or again, find us anytime. Lifeplanwealth.com. All right. So you coach your son's uh, basketball teams. Yes. Do your kids play football? Yep. Or you guys football just and basketball. Oh, well, okay. So all kinds of athletics happening in the Douglas household. Now being in Michigan, is the news about Saban so big that it infiltrates the entire country? The fact that he's retiring. Well, yeah, he, he crosses uh, out of sports even like he is in the business world. He's considered an expert strictly because of anybody who's interested in how to run systems, organizations, create legacies, yeah. create, create dynasties. He's one of the best. And especially here in mid Michigan, because obviously he was a Michigan State football coach here for a while, That's and right. um, and brought us success, got us uh, to the Citrus Bowl, and yeah, so he has a special place here. He's got great roots here at Michigan State. Obviously, yeah. he left us on to uh, bigger, better things. But I always yeah. say, if you want Alabama people, should thank us for the opportunities we gave Nick Saban to grow <laughs> into welcome, the Alabama. man who he is today. Right? We did it all by ourselves. Yeah, we kind of. <laughs> That's you're welcome. You're welcome, um, America. Um, Michigan State Spartans here for you. So the news of his retirement, obviously the college football world, the entire football world is shooketh. I don't know why it's such a, I, I'm surprised that everybody is so. Well, it's because it was sudden. It. He never talked about it. Never talked He's about never it. He's never going to talk about it though. Right. Somebody but there's level. Like Coach Krzyzewski from Duke. He, he went on like the, this is my last year tour because they tend to, especially in programs like this, they groom a successor yeah. where they say, I'm leaving. This is my guy. We're going to replace me with him. And over the next year, as I finish out, our recruits are getting this two-headed well, animal. I think that probably he was waiting for a moment that he knew he was done, and then he announced it. I don't think he had – I think he was just going to play a coach until he was done coaching. So this is yeah. this is what happened. This whole conversation we want to have is the idea of – I mean, obviously, nobody's built a football dynasty like Saban has at Alabama. He's announced his retirement, age 72 years old. He's won six national championships at Alabama, seventh if you include his win at LSU. So ESPN did get a chance to talk to him about how he decided to retire. Was there a tipping point that made him realize that it was time to pass the torch? And here's how he responded. My age started to become a little bit of an issue. People wanted assurances that I would be here for three years, five years, whatever. And it got harder and harder for me to be honest about. And to be honest, this last season was grueling. It was really just the grind of, can you do this the way you want to do it? Can you do it the way you've always done it? and be able to sustain it and do it for the entire season. And if I couldn't make a commitment to do that in the future, the way I I think I have to do it, there's never a good time. But I thought maybe this was the right time. Again, he it sounds to me like he he just decided all of a sudden, and then he went in the next day and said, ladies, gentlemen, today's the day, and now everybody's trying to figure it out. It's interesting to hear how he talks, although I guess that's just kind of how he is. He's very even killed in calm nature because he sounded tired. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's funny. I have a client who we met with uh, 2018, maybe, and he came in and he said, I don't plan on retiring for four more years. Yeah. I just need to know if I could retire tomorrow. And so we went through and I said, why do you want to know that? He goes, because if I just don't feel like it, if they talked to me the wrong way, I just need to know that I could if I needed to. And he had the same issues. He's like, I work on projects. He was a, a... a pretty high level executive guy. And he said, I work in these projects. When I sign onto a project, it's a two to three year project. Mm-hmm. And so when they come to the project, if it's not the right one for me, I'm basically, I either do the project or I retire. So we had to run all these illustrations for him for the sake of if there's that day where I feel it, then I have to be able to walk out. And so it's nice to get that planning done ahead of time for him because he specifically said, am I okay? We ran said, yes, you're okay. We did all these analysis. Well, then he ended up working three more years, but that freedom of thought said I could do it when I needed to. And that's kind of where Nick Saban's coming from. He's like, if I'm going to commit to another, because a recruit commits to you saying it's going to be three years, right? If I'm coming into college football, it's at least three years. All right. Well, are you going to be here for all three? And the transfer portal is so wild. NIL deals are so wild right now. It's a changing landscape. And someone like him, Nick Saban's like, well, obviously there's going to be people with issues. I'm a Miami Dolphins fan also. 
So he left Michigan State and he left the Dolphins, right? So he's burned me twice. <laughs> but I can't help but respect I didn't know. I couldn't remember built. where he went when he went to the NFL. He was only there for a year, wasn't he? Uh, a year and a half. Yeah. Because okay. he had one year that was okay. He got to nine and seven. And then yeah. the second year he left midseason, I believe. But it's just, it's one of those things where it is what yeah. it is. But once he found his right landing spot, I mean, he's a legend. I mean, and yeah, oh, there was his no word is him. his word. And so for him, he's going to try. He's high accountability. So if you say it, you do it. And so now he's like, I don't know if I can comfortably say it anymore. Thinking about the gentleman you were just talking about, for example, mm-hmm. and the work you helped him figure out, okay, you could retire today if you wanted to. You're fine if you want to work four more years, just that knowledge, that wherewithal. But I mean, let's talk about that crunching those numbers, that dollars and cents knowledge of knowing that you have what you need financially. But the flip side of it, how do you help somebody decide when it's the right time? Because a lot of people, listen, Nick Saban's brilliant and he's surrounded by brilliant people. But I mean, you can't tell me he just decided by himself he was going to retire. That's that's a dynasty right there. There were people involved in that decision behind the scenes. And for the everyday man and woman, knowing the dollars and cents are there, great. But sometimes you just need to sit down and talk to somebody about this. Yeah. And having a professional, it makes a world of difference, I feel. Well, for a lot of people, when they retire, it's like they're more and more. I think the days of I hit 30 years and then I'm out, mm-hmm. that's fading. I still have a couple of people, especially with the big three, who and they know that at Ford, if they hit 30 years, their pension jumps dramatically or their buyouts jump dramatically. But for most people, it's not that case. Actually, studies show that the average worker now works at their last job before retirement less than 12 years. So when they're retiring out to finish out their work life, very few people are hitting some long, substantial number. Right. But for a lot of people, it's good until it's not. I'm working. I'm loving it. I'm feeling it. And all of a sudden, you're like, ah, I do not want to. There's a great commercial series going on right now I've seen. Um, it's it's on social media, but it's a uh, of teachers as they're going back to school after the Christmas break, or as they go back in, they're talking about it. Like it's a jail sentence. (laughs) They, uh, they said like, there's a guy sitting in his car and he goes, it's my last 24 hours before I turn myself in. I'm like, Oh, what is this? And he goes, you know, but I signed up for this. This is my life. This is my lot in life. Can't do the time. Don't do the crime. So tomorrow I go back from Christmas break and I teach second graders for another semester. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my gosh, I thought this guy was going to prison. You know, it's a funny thing. But but there's some reality, not necessarily in a young guy teaching second graders, mm-hmm. but for people who are working and they've done 25, 30, 40 years in the workforce. Yeah. And they say, I like the purpose. I like everything it's given me. But all of a sudden, a lot of times a switch flips and maybe it's coming back from the summer, because even though we're not teachers necessarily, a lot of us still enjoy quite a bit of time off in the summer. Sometimes in mid-Michigan, like right now, we went from 35 degrees last week to three degrees this week. And with the real feel, it's negative 10. And people are like, I do not want to leave my house. Mm-hmm. It'd be great if I was retired or if I was in Florida or Georgia, right? Like if they could go to these different places and get out of this weather, maybe it wouldn't be so bad to not be in Michigan and working anymore. And there's mm-hmm. just a, a switch that flips, just like Saban, where it's there are conversations, but all of a sudden you just don't want to do it anymore. And then when you still have to work, it's not the joy that you had working prior. It's a different feeling because you're like, ah, it's harder and harder to get out of bed, harder and harder to get to work. And and you don't want to live out a life or a legacy where the last three years of your life working are just miserable. So to have those plans in place, like we did with Bill, we just walked through with him and said, when you're ready, let's flip the switch. If, if your body, if your mind, if your will has flipped a switch, let's financially flip a switch and get you into a life that you enjoy and you're pursuing again. You know, we don't want you in this stuck in this rut because there's not just your work life and not just your life expectancy, but there's what's called a health span. And that's mm-hmm. how long you are functional, healthy and living out your life. And so sometimes people live to 90, but they're only really living a health span to 80 or 83 in the last six, seven years. They don't really move a lot. Things are different. Well, the less miserable years of work you have, studies have shown that the longer your after work health span is. So if you can retire on time. And that's different for everybody, what that phrase means. But if you can retire on time, which is a good place, a good timing for you, and then you jump into something else. I volunteer. I serve in my community. I serve in my church. I play pickleball. I have a group of people we travel with. We take cruises. We snowbird. Whatever it is, that is your refirement. You've taken your energy that was good from work. As soon as it turned bad, I repurposed it into something else. And I never got into that drudge where I'm like, ah, 
life kind of stinks, right? And it shouldn't be that way. So you just quickly shift and pivot because the plans are made in advance. That is your refirement. Is that, a, is that a Mike Douglas coined term? I've never heard that before. I love so that. So I heard it from a minister uh, several years ago who talked yeah. about how when someone retires, it's not, it doesn't mean you're done serving, giving, loving your community, you know, making an impact on the world. The whole difference is you just refire yourself. You got to you know, find your refire. Yeah. You got to yeah. refuel and refire. I love yeah. that. That's an amazing idea. Right, I don't so- think you trademarked it. Maybe I can do <laughs> <laughs> but no, pastor, that's it's, yeah. Pastor, we're taking your word. <laughs> yep, Pastor Dave. I got it from Pastor Dave, and he was it was a great phrase. Um, and he was even talking about creating uh, instead of retirement homes, refirement homes, like where yeah, hey, you're still active and mobile. You just need somewhere to stay, especially for widows, um, mm-hmm. somewhere to stay that keeps you actively engaged, physically moving, and mentally um, engaged in things. So it's yeah. a great it's a great thing. Lifeplanwealth.com is where you can find us. There is a button right there. At the top of the page, start your retirement roadmap today. You can click there, fill in some information, and that is how you begin the conversation with Mike and his team about when you decide that yeah. now is the time. How do you find purpose? How do you refire yourself in your retirement years? So, all right. And I think that, that to that point, Heather, too, it's yeah. like the, you know, there's some people who say, I don't want to deal with finances. I hate them. You know, yeah. it's, the, it's the part I don't want to deal with, especially not yeah. taxes. But to build a plan in advance, that way, when the time comes, it's not a matter of figuring things out. It's a matter of saying, all right, flip the switch, like get us there. And so to have those meetings, especially with anybody who says, I think I may be starting to turn a corner, get the conversation started earlier. Because if you, once that thing in your body and your will turns and you say, I don't want to be here anymore to then sit down, start building plans and realize you need two more years of work is not the right place to be. If we can get plans in place before you need them, then when you say, ah, something turned, I may want to get out of here. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, Mm -hmm. you step into retirement. We got a plan that's built for it and you're good to go. So that's what we need to be really doing more of. Okay. So then with that in mind, is there an age? When do you recommend people reach out to you, a a retirement planner, to have this conversation? Is it when you turn 50? Is it 55? Is it 59? Is it when you're 10 years, five years out? Maybe it's not an age. It's a time frame. When do you reach out to somebody? Because right, I mean, well, I know it's, I'm, I'm 44 years old. I don't have any business reaching out to a retirement planner. Right. I, I think there's two sides of it, right? So there is an element of getting a conversation started. Even today, we do work with some younger people trying to help yeah. them build out some strategies and plans because as a younger person, if you can make one or two small adjustments, they will have a compound effect over the next 15, 20 years. But especially if you're looking at when does this conversation start, it's within five years of retirement. If you say I'm five years out, maybe you don't know the exact date, but you say, well, I'm 55. I wouldn't mind being out by 60, but I don't know if I can because I'm not going to get Social Security until 62. Okay, we can run those numbers and give you the peace of mind that it takes. So that's it comes from that conversation. But yeah, I'd say within five years of retirement, maybe a little sooner, depending on your situation. If you're a business owner, there may be some more time we need to prepare for it. But there's different things you can do. And everybody's kind of unique to that. And that's why we say it's not a matter of a hard rule. It's just as soon as you get that feeling of I may need to have some things put together, that's when we do it. So that's on the website, lifeplanwealth.com. Click that Start Your Retirement Roadmap Today button, and we'll start having those conversations about what it takes and what it looks like to build your future. Finding your refirement. Is that what we're going to say? I love the refirement thing. We got to build on that, Mike. Retire happy, refire happy. (laughs) What? We just named the book. You saw it here first. That's right. Absolutely. (laughs) It's it's a uh, auditory trademark is what we just did right there. We just did it. Saw it here first. Heard it here first. Um, So again, as Mike was pointing out, if you're feeling something about your working years and feeling a kind of way. Now it's time to get started and uh, you can do that anytime, lifeplanwealth.com. That's where you can go to begin the conversation. We also have links posted in the show notes. So just click there or again, find us at lifeplanwealth.com. Thanks for listening to Michigan's Retirement Coach with Mike Douglas. To learn more, visit lifeplanwealth.com. Michael Douglas is an investment advisor representative of Stewards Wealth Planning, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Michael Douglas is licensed in your state, please call 517-323-7526. Stewards Wealth Planning, LLC is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Michael B. Douglas, NP. Number nine six five zero nine three nine.